just noticed my um background and my t-shirt uh this <laughs> not intentional in the slightest uh okay so today i'm talking about a film which i saw recently and i'm not really sure how i'm gonna talk about it enormous spoilers for this video i don't think i can talk about this movie without spoiling it this is also a movie i like can't recommend to anybody but i can at the same time this movie is fantastic it's probably one of the best movies i've seen in a long time and it's probably one of the scariest movies i've seen in a long time and i'm really not being hyperbolic about that i've seen a lot of spooky films but this one's pretty spooky <laughs> it's, it's like beyond spooky it's, it's genuinely to the core upsetting so i love horror and i like feeling bad and i like feeling uncomfortable and i like getting scared so I saw a movie recently called Possum and I was scrolling through, actually I originally saw it on Amazon Prime and I watched the trailer for it and I was immediately interested because it is the kind of movie I absolutely love where it's very quiet, it looked from the trailer very quiet, you know a bit more like on the art house side of things, it had from what I could see in the trailer the most horrendous puppet I've ever seen in my life. And if you know me from my YouTube channel, hi, my name's Moose, you'll know that I am terrified of things that like are stop motion or puppetry and that means I, you know, I actually really like them in horror. But I was scrolling through Shudder and I saw that they had added it on there. I showed my boyfriend the trailer, so he was like, oh, this looks interesting, so he watched it. I was not expecting this movie to be like this. <laughs> Possum is the story about a grown adult man visiting his childhood home and kind of experiencing his trauma through like a physical manifestation. So this movie was shot in England, in very specifically in Norfolk. Aww. So it's definitely got that kind of English grime aesthetic. I also watched a movie recently called His House, which is also filmed in the UK about asylum seekers and that movie is very good but it has the very it has a very similar feel to it um especially if you are british and you grew up in in the uk you will relate to this movie heavily just via the way the movie looks so already this movie has kind of like grappled on to me slightly I'd say 90% of the movies I watch are in American, which is kind of interesting because I've never had... So, for example, Halloween is relatable, but if Halloween was set in an English street with English houses, it would be like 70 times more relatable for me. Whereas I feel like Halloween is much more relatable to people who grew up in like suburban homes in America. Does that make any sense? So Philip, our main character, played by Sean Harris, and he is being absolutely tormented by this puppet he's created. It's kind of alluded to in the movie that he is a puppeteer or someone in like the creative arts as an adult, and he's made this puppet to kind of... I think it's alluded to that he's going to show it to children. <laughs> um, <laughs> our character Philip is kind of reliving his trauma that he has been that he suffered as a child vicariously through this puppet the the film has this incredible sense of progression in its dread it never plays all of its cards outright to you at any point it kind of is very slow moving up until the ending where everything sort of clicks and the film it is the most satisfying horrifying 
movie ending I've ever seen. It, it just all clicks. It it just all can't suddenly makes sense. And there's a lot of like subtle details sewn into it, which make it like make the details much much more horrific. For example, there's a poem. Mother, father, what's a foot? Only possum black as soot. So Philip, our main character, is has got this little book, this storybook, and you can tell he's been writing it for a long time, like a diary. I can't tell if he wrote it as a child or as an adult. Doesn't matter to be honest. Um, but he's reading excerpts from it and we get this poem as a through line throughout the whole whole film and there is lots of mentions of how the abuse happened and like how it felt and it's disgusting. So our other main character, Maurice, we don't know at first but it's this kind of like father figure um, character in the movie and he's not directly known what his relation is to Philip right away although we do know it, he is not his father kind of near the beginning of the film so you're kind of sitting there guessing like who is this Maurice character like why is he here this movie does also an incredible job of building you up to a jump scare which is incredible and this is one of the few films I've ever seen where it the jump scares are really, 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 really well earned. Um, there was one near the end which actually made me jump out of my skin and that has never happened to me before. I actually like was in bed going like Wah! <laughs> So yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, so let's talk about the puppet for a second. Okay, so I am completely, after watching this, I am completely bewildered why more why not more horror films use the imagery of spiders as its like horror motif? Does that make any sense? So I can think of like movies that are about spiders, like arachnophobia, and I can think of movies that have like a spider in it, but nothing that's used as its main like source of the horror in the film, which is wild. After watching this film is wild. This puppet in this film looks like a Junji Ito, like, ugh, like he just sicked it up one day and it's like crawling around. It is disgusting and I do not have arachnophobia. I do not, I'm not frightened of spiders in the slightest. The movie does a good job of making it apparent that it is his puppet so you can kind of like forgive the way kind of it looks it does actually look like a puppet you can tell that someone's like made it if that makes sense it's, it's not super shiny clean like cgi puppet spider it is like a puppet but but this thing is truly hideous uh, one thing i did notice actually which i thought was quite interesting is the the puppet is kind of like a spider and it has a human head on the front of it and I was kind of guessing halfway through the film like is this like the head of like a, like a real person's head decapitated and maybe put on some kind of puppet but it's very clearly like a fake head but it has a very similar resemblance to Philip and he has a very very straight face and I was looking up information about the movie after and apparently they, are, they were originally going to give the puppet like a horrified or scared face and then instead they opted to give it quite like a neutral face which is way scarier it's just way scarier because you can kind of project your own fear onto it then it's horrible it's horrible I hate it but I love it Aww. Throughout the movie, Philip is trying to like get rid of this puppet somehow. He's trying to like throw it in the fire, he's trying to throw it in the lake. And it just keeps coming back to him, it keeps appearing again in his bedroom. Perfect allegory for abuse! <laughs> um, I don't know why I said that so happily, sorry. Yeah, so in the end, it turns out that Maurice, the other character that I was talking about, is actually his uncle. You see where this is going? And Maurice S. Word abused Philip as a child. Um, there's also a through line in the movie of a missing child. It keeps cropping up on the TV. And it's kind of implied throughout the movie that you probably think it's Philip. And Philip is kind of going mad because he's got like this trauma about maybe like, abducting 
children, but it turns out it's just it's just Maurice. <laughs> I won't give it too much away, just in case you do want to watch this film. As soon as you sort of find out it's Maurice that did these hor horrendous things to Philip, literally, it's it's it is insane how much the information you have been fed through the film had clicks into place at the end. It's crazy. And it's extremely satisfying. It's extremely satisfying, the ending. Um, it made me feel kind of sick afterwards, but it was quite satisfying. So there you go, it's got something going for it. At the same time, if I'm going to put my like critic review hat, at the same time, this movie feels kind of a bit hollow in its message. I think what it comes out to do is incredible in the way that it shows how people deal with their abuse in a, like a physical manifestation like how much it chases you how much it clings on to you and how like horrendous it can be and it, it never goes away but at the same time this movie kind of doesn't really have anything to say other than that and you're kind of left with this kind of hollow feeling of not really sure how to feel about it and I think that's what's incredible about it as well. Something I did think of as well, which I feel very clever for. The reason why I feel like it might be called possum is because possums have to play dead to kind of deal with predators and make sure the predator kind of leaves them. This movie is also based off a book for an anth a horror anthology book and the director um, and the author are the same person. Matthew Holness is the director. I really want to read it actually, but it is, I think it's a similar plot except the narrative is told via Philip telling his trauma through his puppet rather than like him trying to escape it. But this movie in, in general is like just, it's probably the most perfect portrayals of abuse and trauma and how trauma follows you. I've never seen a film do it any better before. One thing as well I noticed in the film is there is a lot of like repeating imagery. There's a lot of kind of the same shots over and over again, which could quite heavily imply kind of living your trauma over and over again. Uh, also, this movie um, reminded me of The Cure song Lullaby. I don't know if that's purely just because of the association with the spider, but it kind of has, if you've ever watched the video, it kind of has like this weird similar vibe. And I hesitate to say that this movie might have been inspired slightly by it. It just, it seems too coincidental because a lot of people say like the the song lullaby is kind of robert smith's trauma with drug use um people have alluded to the video being about s-word abuse as well so it kind of weirdly fits and it's very interesting <laughs> it kind of also goes without saying that the visuals in this film are phenomenal they really use Norfolk has an incredibly flat landscape and they really use that to its advantage. They use a lot of like wide flat shots and it's so creepy. I am the spirit of dark and lonely water. But no one expects to find me here. But there's one born every minute. Under the water there are traps. supposed to go in there. Oh, go on, there's a gap down there. A gang of kids broken yesterday. It's very likely that 400 of you will be injured in your cars tomorrow. Oh, also, do you know what's something terrifying? Okay, there is a through line in the film about a story about a fox and how Philip sees, is out with a group of boys and he sees a dead fox. He's telling He's telling this story to Maurice because Maurice is like, tell me the story about the fox. <laughs> so he has like a traumatic memory of him and a group of boys like seeing a dead fox and doing not great, not, not very, uh, not very good stuff to the fox, poor old Philip. 
And there's another point in the film where Philip sees a dead fox and walks past it, turns around and the fox is there, alive, like standing up on two legs. After watching this film, I went to bed, I woke up the next morning, I went to my studio, I started working, and what do you think I saw in my, in my fucking garden? A fox. And it shit me up. I turned, I thought, I saw it in my peripheral, I was sewing, I saw it in my peripheral vision, I thought it was a pigeon, because we get a lot of pigeons in our garden. Um, nope, it was a fox. Just literally feet away from where I work. I saw it out the window. I have never been so frightened in my life. <laughs> it was too serendipitous and too... It just freaked me out because this movie really did freak me out quite intensely. So that's scary. It's pretty cool at the same time. I have never seen a fox in my garden so it's quite cool to see them lingering about. So would I recommend possum? Probably, probably. If if you're not so sensitive to themes of abuse, then I really recommend it. It's a very, very, very interesting watch, and it is a movie I've never I've never seen quite like it before. It's a very unique film, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. If enjoying is the right word, I don't think I enjoyed it really, but I did enjoy it. Uh, horror, eh? Spooky! <laughs> it is not for the faint of heart. I really enjoy watching people do those disturbing movie iceberg lists or what have you. And I kind of... This movie doesn't belong on those lists, it really doesn't. It's like in another league of its own. But I rarely watch movies that really challenge me, like Possum. And I am definitely going to watch more because I... In a weird roundabout way, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. It really did get me thinking and me and my partner had a very good talk about the movie afterwards. Man and his spider. If you like a man and his spider, you'll like Possum. I never do movie reviews or anything of this like and I kind of just wanted to come here and just sort of ramble instead of having like any kind of structure. So please let me know what you think in the comments. But yeah, thanks so much for watching guys. Um, feel free to subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. And I will see you on the next video. Bye.